Hello again, friends, and uh, welcome back to the stage. Our first keynote of today is our president, David Nally, and he will be delivering the annual State of the Feather Address, telling you what's been going on in the foundation for the past year or so. So without further ado, I welcome to the stage my uh, friend and colleague, David. Thank you very much. Thanks, Rich. Uh, like Rich, I'm really excited every time ApacheCon rolls around. Uh, although I, I do miss the ability to sit around a table and eat food uh, with, uh, with the attendees. So while this is, uh, while this is a virtual event uh, and, and we're not going to be able to break bread together, I, uh, I'm excited about folks who are here. I, I do think that this virtual experience gives us a lot more ability to include more people. Uh, there are there are more people who can easily attend, and we have content in more languages and and things of that nature that just make this uh, an incredible opportunity to share what's going on at Apache. And ApacheCon for me has always been about getting to interact with people. Uh, the The talks are exciting, and I always learn something when attending the talks. Uh, but the most important things for me have always been the hallway track. And so I hope you'll take advantage of the hallway track, the virtual hallway track we have set up and the birds of a feather sessions. And I hope to, to interact with many of you there. Uh, so this is a review of, of kind of the past year and, and it's going to be a different one than you might've seen uh, in prior years, because I want to look at some things that, that maybe aren't obvious or we don't necessarily celebrate all the time. Uh, the first thing I want to do, though, I, I said ApacheCon is about people. And uh, I first met Patricia at ApacheCon. And unfortunately, Patricia, who was one of our members, passed away in July of this year. Uh, she served for, uh, for a while as a director, a member of the board of directors. And, you know, it was it was fascinating to me to see the different perspective that she brought. Uh, and uh, she led a, a fascinating life. She worked for tech behemoths for four decades, uh, earned her PhD, and then her retirement hobby was contributing to open source at Apache. And she did that in a number of different projects. And, um, and she passed this year. And, uh, you know, I think it's, I think it's worthwhile that we take just a moment to, to remember some of our friends who passed on. Um, the, the big glossy headlines though, for the Apache Software Foundation. Uh, 227 million lines of code that we act as a steward for the replacement cost. And that is the cost that if we had to start from scratch to recreate what exists today, would be $22 billion. Uh, that's what we would have to pay to, to generate the same, uh, the same code that's there. And so that does not come close to representing the value of that code and what kind of impact it has on the world. Next, and, and this statistic really shocked me. Um, I, I honestly thought that it was a magnitude lower. I, I expected it to be around 80,000 contributors but over the life of the Apache Software Foundation and its hundreds of projects, 630,000 people have contributed uh, to building these communities, building the software, uh, and, and helping users. And that's, that's a stunning amount to me. Again, I was expecting that number to be uh, an order of magnitude less. In addition, there are 8,372 uh, as of when I wrote this presentation, people who have earned uh, the committer status, and that is people who are trusted to be able to commit directly to the code bases. Uh, that also is is a massive number when you consider uh, when you consider what the foundation is delivering. There are 850 members, and that's that is the nonprofit equivalent of stockholders. Those are people who elect the board and help set the, the general direction of the foundation. They set the, um, they help define the culture 
and uh, and generally serve as as the people who uh, have a stake in what the future of the foundation is like. And then there are 200 projects that are delivering over 350 different software products. And it, it boggles my mind that this is all volunteer driven. Uh, Rich mentioned, uh, had a long list of folks who were volunteering to help put ApacheCon on. And uh, it's like that in, in every facet of the foundation. There are, there are volunteers who spend their time to make the foundation a better place. But it's not just about numbers, right? And, and you know, when we look at uh, the, the projects that are members of uh, their, these communities uh, belong at the, the Apache Software Foundation, uh, that comes down to people. And we celebrate a lot of things. You may have seen uh, recently the Cassandra project just released for it. And so major version coming out and lots of news around that, that community came together. And every month there are impressive deliverables that folks are making coming together as volunteers to, to um, improve the open source ecosystem. But I want to take a little step back and, and look at some interesting trends that we've noticed. Uh, so this, uh, this graph represents folks who have contributed to code. So this is, this is developer contributions over the past year. And one of the things that stood out to me is the vast majority of contributions are made by people with uh, less than a year of of experience at Apache, not not necessarily less than a year of development experience, but less than a year of uh, time that they've interacted with the Apache Software Foundation. And that's really interesting to me. That that tells me it's easy for folks to engage. It tells me it's easy for them to, to make a meaningful contribution and, and get patches in. Uh, what's also interesting is to look at that transition, looking at the folks who have been present for one to two years. So plenty of drive-by contributions, you know, people who will make one contribution and probably never come back. And then a substantial part of that, roughly three out of four, seem to make another contribution uh, and, and stick around for at least another year. Uh, that tells me that the Apache Software Foundation is, uh, seems to be welcoming, seems to be uh, increasing that virtuous cycle that's getting getting folks involved in the foundation. And then like every, uh, every volunteer effort, there are cycles and folks will, uh, will both come and depart, things happen, job changes and, and life changes. Uh, but you know, more than, uh, more than 9% of the folks who are contributing code on a regular basis have been around for more than five years. Um, and so this is a this fascinating look into uh, into how newcomers are able to participate and able to quickly come up to be up to speed and contribute meaningful changes to projects. It also, though, should, would tell you that roughly seventy percent of the folks who are contributing code to Apache at any time have been around for less than two years, and and that represents its own challenges in. Uh, communicating culture and uh, ensuring that we're always being welcoming. And I would be remiss. Uh, Rich mentioned the sponsors who uh, who sponsored ApacheCon. I think you should absolutely celebrate them. Uh, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the foundation sponsors. And and these folks have an interesting place. They are providing. Uh, providing money for the foundation to operate. And the foundation's a weird place. We're all volunteer driven. We, um, we're essentially on a path that, uh, that not a lot of folks are mirroring, even in the nonprofit space. And so these folks have recognized the value of the foundation and what it represents. And so I would like for you, uh, I, I know you're all sitting in front of a screen, I'd like for you to take a moment and to 
Um, thank some of these sponsors on Twitter. Uh, they truly do make the, the foundation's operations possible. Additionally, we have, uh, we have these targeted platinum sponsors and uh, targeted gold sponsors, et cetera. Uh, these folks provide in-kind services. Uh, this may be in addition to or completely separate from any cash money, but that uh, they are also uh, providing us with services we would otherwise have to spend money on. And so again, please, please spend some time thanking some of these sponsors. And the state of the feather though is, is an opportunity um, to talk about what the foundation's done. And our marketing and publicity folks do a really good job of announcing things like the new version of Cassandra uh, and the new long-term stable version of CloudStack. Uh, press releases go out, uh, announcements on mailing lists. And so those are really, really easy to see. And I wanted to take this time though, and tell you about some things you probably don't see and celebrate some of the successes that, uh, that goes on in terms of the scaffolding, right? So first of all, the, the marketing and publicity folks released a documentary, uh, Trillions and Trillions Served, and it's, it was filmed at ApacheCon in Las Vegas and in Berlin. And uh, so you know that it, it uh, started a couple of years ago. It's been produced and released, and uh, if you have not watched it, it is absolutely worth your time. Uh, one spoiler, I do make a small cameo appearance in this documentary, uh, so you can look out for that. We also produce an annual report, and if you're interested in the, in the inner workings of the foundation, you're not going to get it out of this talk because I'm I've essentially got another six minutes to tell you about all the wonderful things that have happened. So I'm only going to hit the highlights, but uh, the annual report has uh, balance sheets and uh, a detailed accounting of things that have been going on in the foundation, along with operational and project statistics uh, and, and is an excellent, uh, excellent read if you wanna look at the inner workings of the foundation. But I do want to highlight some of what I consider to be the interesting pieces for this year. And I want to start with our treasury. Uh, the treasurer's office has spent a lot of time over the past year or year and a half uh, improving our processes, uh, bringing about automation, bringing about much better oversight and audit capacity to the foundation so that we're sure that we are acting as good stewards of the things that we've been entrusted with. Uh, but also making it much easier for volunteers to work on. And if you've, uh, I was around in, when the foundation kept its books by a single volunteer and it was kept on a local computer in Quicken or QuickBooks. And then every time that role rotated, somebody had to move the file. Um, uh, things have been tr uh, tremendously modernized. Uh, and I think that puts the foundation in a much better position uh, to act as a steward for the things that, that we have been entrusted with. Uh, the brand management folks, which you probably never will interact with, uh, they focus on preserving names uh, and the brands and the reputations that our communities have stood up. Uh, they've spent a lot of time uh, doing proactive work that, that hopefully minimizes that threat, but also actively going out after folks who try and attach our brands to malware or inject uh, malware into software products uh, that look like the, the products that we ship and, and thus confuse consumers. And you never hear about the work that they're doing, but they've been doing a lot of that. Um, and, and I think it's a, a huge value. The Office of the Secretary, um, you know, it is a, it's largely a thankless job and those, those folks are keeping the important records for the foundation. So they keep our corporate records and that goes on every single day. They're receiving new uh, contributor licensing agreements or their software grant agreements uh, and plenty of others. And that really comes down to the provenance for uh, the foundation's intellectual property. 
But this year, the past year, they've been working on improving privacy controls because in those records are, is a lot of uh, personal information. And so ratcheting down that to protect the privacy of our contributors has been a big focus of work that they've done recently. Infrastructure does a lot of work day to day. Uh, one of their recent wins has been deploying a content delivery network, and you're going to start to see the impact of that uh, in, in uh, both the accessibility of our web properties and our download infrastructure. And I think that's going to make life tremendously better. I do want to say thank you to the folks who have helped us operate the mirror system for decades now. Uh, the foundation would not be where it is uh, today without, uh, without folks helping us to distribute the software. We appointed a data privacy officer uh, in the past couple of years, and that's really strange for us because we pride ourselves on everything happening in public and, uh, and being very transparent, but we're also in a place where we have uh, data that, that's considered private information. So lots of work going on into improved privacy policies and getting data protection agreements signed to make sure that we're complying with the law. Uh, you're going to see a lot more of this impact coming uh, in the next year, but I'm really excited about some of the things that, that have already happened there. Another one of those uh, groups that you probably don't ever interact with is the Legal Affairs Committee. And a lot of times they're focusing on handling uh, licensing policy questions for our projects, but uh, they're also things that you won't see are dealing with subpoenas and other litigation that uh, that comes forward and that affects Apache and its downstream users. And they're just quietly uh, churning over that, getting things done. A few years ago, we set up a diversity and inclusion group. And we tend to think of ourselves as very welcoming. Uh, our stats seem to indicate that it's easy to contribute. But frankly, a lot of us uh, have forgotten or, or didn't experience in the same way what it takes to become a new contributor. And so we don't realize that friction. And so one of the things that I'm, I'm super excited out of the diversity and inclusion group is they've been working with new users, new contributors to the Apache uh, community and figuring out where the friction is, writing a friction log, where folks talk about uh, the pain points that they experience so that we can ho hopefully learn from that. Uh, one of the examples that, that uh, comes to my mind is it's been nine years since I filed uh, the individual contributor licensing agreement. I, I don't remember what that was like or what, the, what those hurdles might have been. Uh, and so uh, they're doing a good job of highlighting that and you'll see uh, if, you, if you check out the website, you'll see a number of reports from some of those friction logs. The marketing and publicity folks, you know, they've, they've obviously produced the documentary that I referenced above and the annual report, but they do a great job of keeping the voice of the foundation in front of folks, uh, telling folks about the exciting things uh, like new software releases and important goings on in the community. I shouldn't really have to say much about conferences. Uh, you're here, so clearly the conferences folks have been very effective. They've stood up ApacheCon at home, uh, but you might not know that they also stood up uh, ApacheCon Asia, uh, which uh, was adjusted for those time zones and languages. Uh, and they also put on a host of project specific events. Uh, Rich and Ruth and Brian and, and a number of other volunteers have just been continuously delivering uh, a place for our project communities to come together. And, and I think you'll see with uh, this ApacheCon at home just how powerful that is. Uh, the Travel Assistance Committee, I, I really expected them to do nothing uh, during this time period because nobody's traveling. There are no in-person events and, and the TAC uh, essentially exists to fund speakers. Uh, and uh, instead, they've taken this downtime to modernize their infrastructure. They've got a new web app that's ready to go as soon as uh, life returns to some semblance of normal. Uh, and so they've, 
they've really utilized this downtime uh, to make make things better. Uh, the fundraising folks, as I mentioned, they've got a challenging job. Uh, the thing that I'm really excited about is even in the midst of a pandemic, they beat their estimates uh, and they are communicating uh, effectively the value proposition of the foundation and, uh, and impressing upon folks why it's important to continue the work and to fund that. The security committee, uh, again, probably folks that you never interact with, um, they essentially serve to hold the foundation accountable. And I think you can't, uh, you can't miss this. Uh, Mark Cox from the security committee has a keynote tomorrow. I think it's well worth attending, uh, where he talks about how the, how this community runs its security processes. Uh, but they're dealing with all the vulnerabilities reports coming in and they're holding projects accountable because we realize that we have a obligation to the public to ensure that the software we release is well maintained, or if not, that we're doing a good job of telling people, hey, the software's free for you to consume, but know that nobody's paying attention to it anymore. And I'm just a couple minutes over. I do wanna emphasize that despite all of these, um, these impressive accomplishments that have been going on behind the scenes, that Apache is really about the community and it's really about people. ApacheCon is a great opportunity for you to get to spend some time, even if it's virtually, with other members of this community. I hope you take advantage of that. Uh, I think you'll find ApacheCon is a great place to do that. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rich. Thank you, David. And uh, we hope that uh, you all learned something out of that. And we will, in fact, be hearing from our vice president of security in one of our keynotes later in this week. Thank you, David. For our next keynote, we're going to do something a little bit different. Our keynote uh, speaker is Ashley Wolf, who is the director of the Open Source Program Office at GitHub. And she's actually pre-recorded her talk, and she'll be hanging out with you in the chat to answer your questions live as she is presenting. So if you'll give me just a moment. I'm going to uh, get that video queued up. I'll be back in, in 10 seconds.